Hi everyone, I'm Jason. Are you prepping for the sheet metal exam? Have you failed once or twice? Or several times? Have you nowhere else to turn for help? Well, you've come to the right place. Now let's get started. Alright guys, everyone, um, lesson one, we're going to get into in a minute here. Uh, I just want to give uh, a little uh, heads up on where I'm coming from. I'm not a professional teacher, I don't teach. What I've been doing for the last almost 10 years is just helping guys with the CFQ. I tutor guys, usually one on one, small groups, two, three, four guys, maybe five guys tops which makes it really easy to help guys that are uh, uh, really having a hard time with stuff like math and pattern, which are the two th things that people get destroyed on when it comes to the C of Q. So if you're getting, uh, if you've already written, like I said in my intro, if you've already written and you're getting like 60, 60 like mid 60s, this is perfect for you guys. It, it's going to make it easy to get over that 70% mark. Now, if you're really struggling and you're down in the 50, between 50 and 60%, it's going to be a lot tougher, but it just means a lot harder work. You know, just you're going to have to keep going over the lessons, which is what the, the setup for this is going to be great because, hey, if you don't remember, restart it, go over again. Pause it, write stuff down, because that's going to be the one thing I, I teach a lot of people, is if you're terrible at memorization or mem memorizing things, write it down. It helps imprint it on your brain, right? And instead of just reading it, it's the same thing with doing math. You can't just look at math and go, oh, I get it. No, well, unless you're a genius, uh, math is practice. You practice, 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 like just like sheet metal. How do you get good at sheet metal? Doing it. So, um, and we're going to talk about reading and comprehension. Can you read? Can you understand? Can you absorb what's uh, being given to you, right? When it comes to the test, you have to be like Sherlock Holmes. Okay, when they ask you a question, what are they talking about? Where are they going with this? Is, is it a math question? Is it an order of operations question? There are many things it could be. So, uh, and again, hey, and if you fail, <laughs> seeing the percentages if you fail go right again if you fail go right again hey it might get expensive but i see so many guys that give up and re and then they uh stop studying and then a year or two later they go, oh i better get it because the ministry or the college of trade is coming after me it's like oh well maybe you should have just kept going and trying to pass in the first place so but again this is what to help guys that uh had issues either way right So the beginning of lesson one, safety. Uh, as I always say to guys, well, you took your working at heights course, yes. Well, uh, and then when I ask questions about safety, they have no clue. And and, and realistically, if, if you 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 should know your safety pretty well to even be walking on a job site. But of course, people don't. Um, before we get into our safety stuff, I want to talk about. Um, we're going to go over a lot of stuff while we're doing this over the next several lessons is how to write a test because that's really important people hey they don't relax they they go in there they're all like uh, <laughs> jumping out like just just scared to do it you got to relax and you got to think like I said earlier you got to be able to uh, absorb what's going on or what I call being a detective Sherlock Holmes and read the question and see what's in there and understand what it, what they're looking for, and uh, when it comes to uh, answers, it's always multiple choice A, B, C, and D. Now, when you get into those questions, yeah, say in order of operations. When I say that, I don't mean bed mass and math. I'm talking about uh, if you're going to make something or install something, wh what's the procedure of doing it? And obviously, there's. Four, there's one or two really good right answers, but there's only one right answer. But you can look at it and with a little bit of thought go, oh, B's out, D's out. And now that you've done that, if you're still guessing 
at least you've only got two questions there, it's a 50-50, it's a 50% chance. If you're guessing on all four, it's only 25% chance, and that's, <laughs> that's just reduced, uh, increased your odds significantly to, pat, uh, to get that question right. And because you're gonna need all the help you can get because out of 120 questions, there's a lot of what I call mysterious questions on the C of Q. Most of it's straightforward sheet metal, yes. But a lot of it is almost guesswork. <laughs> so we'll get into that in a bit. Right? So again, my thing is safety. And again, if you've taken, if you've taken working at heights, uh, one of the, a safety question, a possible safety question, is if you're working on a roof with no guardrail. Uh, how do you protect yourself? And people will say, oh, harness. Oh no, a lifeline. Oh no, a rope crab. Well, none of those are good by themselves. They're all absolutely useless. So if you remember your working heights, you, had, you, you used to be called fall protection, fall arrest, and travel restraint. And what's the better out of those two? Travel restraint. But again, it comes down to the four possible answers. You have to look at them. Okay, is travel restraint in there? No. Is fall arrest in there? Okay, then that's the answer. If, but if you see lifeline, it's not, a lifeline is useless by itself. A harness is useless by itself, right? So again, opening your eyes to these questions. And when I talk about, will this question be on the C of Q? You gotta remember, there's 120 questions you're gonna get. There's at least, I would say, a thousand questions on the C of Q that are out there with all the different tests. I know we hear all these rumors, oh, oh, these guys, oh, this guy has the test. Oh, they might have some good cheat sheets or have a couple, but nobody's got the test because there's so many tests out there. The rumor, I'm from the Toronto area, the rumor is, oh, they, yeah, the Russians got them, right? No, they, don't. they might have a test or something like that, but there's so many questions. So you need to be able to give yourself a good firm grasp of all the material to give yourself the best possible shot at passing this thing because it's not just like you know a couple of questions over the same stuff it, there's so many different things and again the one thing that keeps nailing people the math formulas and pattern pattern development like you know what's a true length line so many people come to me that have been to school and did well in school and it's like well explain to me what a true length line is oh I can't well okay <laughs> that's a problem right so with, uh, let's, let's get this started with uh, uh, safety questions. We're gonna be all over the place. We're gonna, this is gonna take you know, 10, 10 minutes. We're gonna go over a few things. And hopefully, obviously you gotta memorize this stuff. If you write it down, you write it down, right? Realistically, you should know all this anyways because you're on a job site. Like minimum safety apparel, boots and hard hat. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. So, uh, if you gotta get on a scissor lift, what kind of scissor lift training do you need? Uh, elevated work platform training, right? You know, um, so, uh, storage of ropes, right? Where do you not put a rope? You don't put a rope in the sunlight in the back of your truck. Where do you put it? In a cool, dry place, right? Stuff like there's so many of these little simple uh, safety things. Uh, you have a chisel. You have a chisel or uh, a groove seam tool that uh, is started to mushroom. What do you do? You grind away the the uh, mushroom part of it. Uh, a grinder cord and like some of these some of these questions and answers can be a little tricky because here's here and here's here, here's this uh, here's an example uh, you have a frayed grinder cord and one of the answers or possible answers is give it to your supervisor well most of our supervisors the guys that I work with would just take it and hand it to the next guy <laughs> it's like you know, they're not going to go get it fixed. Ah, it's got a little fray in the wire. Ah, send it to the next guy. The proper thing to do is tag it and take it out of service and, and take the responsibility to remove it from so nobody else can get hurt. Um, chisel, fire extinguisher. Another uh, question that I never knew, but how do you uh, put out a fire with a, uh, a fire extinguisher? You point at the base, sweep side to side. I didn't know that. Um, a rope, and like some of this might seem like we're going to be talking about rigging, but it's all rigging, and I, some of this is still safety to me, so I'm kind of tying it all into the same 
category. So uh, tying a rope into a knot, what happens? It reduces by 50, the capacity by 50%. Um, how do you clean a file? Or, or how do you clean a file? I know, it's, well, how do you clean a file? It's a wire brush. Because again, yeah, it's a safety thing because a lot of guys love to use compressed air. And what happens, you blow something, next you know you got a piece of metal in your eye. So again, simple questions, but guys, guys get so tripped up on some of these things. Here, here's another example of a question that I see guys getting tripped up. How do you protect others when you're taking down duct? Well, the obvious thing is uh, put up caution tape so nobody can walk under where you're taking the duct down, but people, you know, <laughs> do dumb things and uh, put in dumb answers too. Um, another thing is if you're, uh, if you say if you're pounding duck together on the floor and somebody's working o overhead, um, what do you do? Uh, it's not put your hard hat on, even though that will be an answer on the CFQ. <laughs> you move. The safest thing, if someone's working overhead, just move, right? Um, there's a good one. Uh, when should you worry about material hazards? as in well it could be a toolbox talk but is it beginning of day end of day beginning of week or end of week it's beginning of every day of course right what must be worn uh when you're welding in a poorly ventilated area respirator which is obviously but some people you know an answer in there could be dust mask and, and somebody somebody will check off dust mask oh that's what i thought it was uh, and we're getting, and again, when it gets into some of these questions again, A, I don't have all the resources to research every possible question and answer that comes across my desk. Um, and I'm also not the smartest guy out there, so I'll, I also take, um, hey, if, if, if people are catching stuff, hey, uh, leave me a message, get a hold of me somehow, we'll figure that out. Uh, email addresses is usually how people get hold of me, but I might be able to do something with this YouTube channel and uh, leave messages through there and comments. Uh, if you if you think something is wrong and you want to debate it, because I debate some of these all the time, like uh, the storage of a hacksaw blade. Simple question: Is it? Some people think it's loose and or oil. Uh, my research has led me to believe that you're supposed to take it off and put the blade backwards on. Right, so when it's sitting in a toolbox and sh shaking around, it's not cutting into things. Which is right, which is wrong. You don't know until you read the answers on the CFQ. Because again, they're all different. And the way they word stuff, it will be different every, every time. You have to kind of use your brain and put some thought to it. And say, get rid of the dumb dumb answers and pick your uh, best one or two and then and go from there. Um, scaffolding. So there's a few questions with scaffolding. A, um, they've always said who's in charge of scaffolding. Well, engineers uh, are the supreme guys over scaffolding, supposedly. Who's who has the last say on scaffolding? You, the worker. So again, that's where you got to check the answers and and read them and you know figure it out on your own. Uh, and at what height do you need guardrails on a scaffold? Eight feet. Um, how do you level scaffolding? It's definitely not pieces of wood or blocks of concrete. They're the leveling jacks. Now, the leveling jacks or the leveling screws or the adjustable feet, they all have different names. And this is where you got to watch out on the CFQ. They use fancy terminology for everything. If they can put a fancy name on it to to twist your brain so you're all like what's that thing and it's, meanwhile it's, it's just a simple question with a simple answer but they use fancy words just to mess you up uh more safety um oh oxyacetylene how do you check for leaks on oxyacetylene no it's not a match that's the old school way of doing it it's soap and water <laughs> after tying another one after tying off a boom truck um what do you do after, after you've set up boom truck like, you know, mobile crane, something like that, it would be, in my thought, check for obstacles, right? Again, there's other things. Uh, some people debate this question with me. Oh, no, it's, it's check capacity and load rating. Uh, again, check your possible answers in the answer columns because this is not just like, okay, this is the question, this is the right answer because that's not how the CFQ works because the way 
some questions uh, evolve on the C of Q. Yes, it, it, back in the day, it might be just, okay, what's the question? Simple answer. But now they, they've become evolved into more <laughs> questionable answers where yeah, you actually have to do some thinking. Uh, what else? Minimum, oh, minimum tie off. So there's different heights for tying off. So you're, you're and again, another very debatable um, number. When your your height of tie off is ten feet, now people will say, "Oh no, no, it's it's lower. It's if if it's over a walking if a path where people are working, it's lower." A general rule of tie off is ten feet. Um, and when do you need to tie off from an open edge? Is six and a half six feet six inches, or two meters? And the ten feet for the height is three meters, right? Switching back between metric and stuff like that. Here's another uh, answer that, a question that people have issues with. If you have a sleeve or a floor opening, especially when you're doing high rise, we always um, have big uh, floor openings for uh, makeup air risers and or garbage chute. So if you've got a hole that's four feet by four feet in the slab that somebody can walk and fall into, how do you protect them? You have to fence it off. Because a lot of people say, oh no, you can just put a piece of plywood on. Not if it's four feet by four feet, definitely not. I could, you know, somebody, some idiot could drive a, drive a scissor lift down the hole, right? And it happens. Uh, safest thing to do, how do you protect that? Caution tape, minimum safety apparel, went through that. Okay. And, okay, more simple stuff, but some people don't know what ladder ratios. When you uh, stand the ladder up against the wall, at what uh, ratio from height up to height uh, distance out from the wall, four to one or three to one. Okay, and, and how high should that ladder extend above the landing area or the roof that you're going to? Three feet or three rungs. Okay, oh, and back to the scaffolding again. Um, I don't think we talked about this. Um, uh, planks. Planks for that scaffolding should be two by tens and they should, the overhang, when they overhang off the end of the scaffolding, those planks should be a minimum six to twelve inches overhang. And, oh, tow board. <laughs> what, what's a tow board for? Like you have tow boards on your scissor lift, you have tow boards, you have tow boards on your fencing and, and I've had people say, What's the tow board for? What do you mean what's the tow board for? And so when the engineers are walking by, you can't kick a hammer off and let it hit them. Hit, hit the <laughs> Watch out for falling hammers. So that's what a tow, a tow board is so you don't accidentally kick your tools off, off of a scaffold or off of a scissor lift or anything like that. Um, another, uh, another possible kind of safety question that might pop up is slings or are slings. Uh, when you're slinging a load, and I think you should know what I'm talking about with a sling. And they're going to say, if, the, if you can't get that sling around the load, what do you do? Well, there's been two, there's two possible answers for this. And again, you've got to read the answers and make your own decision on this. Because for me, my, I've always said, well, take two slings and sling them together to make it one long sling. And then that'll fit around. But some people say, no, no, use shackles. Well, the shackles do work, but so does slinging two slings together because it is an engineered product. It has a CSA or a, a UL label on it. So you're allowed to, because again, it's just like a, uh, a lifeline. Are you allowed to tie a lifeline in a knot? No, you're not. It, only if it has a proper D-ring on it. You know, the, the, like, you know, like, yeah, we do rigging and tie knots, but when you, when you got somebody tying their <laughs> counting their uh, whole, like their life is uh, dependent on that rope not uh, coming off well you get the you get the idea right women's symbols more safety stuff so your women's symbols there's only like five or six of them if you can't memorize a couple of women's symbols yeah you got issues right so uh and knots uh, again going again i talk about this i kind of put the rigging in with the uh rigging in with the safety because i got a group at some artist trying to find spots to group everything and package all this into the best uh tidy uh, convenient uh best way to make get this across to you guys 
um, women symbols. Oh, and um, so you learn what a uh, bowline looks like. A bowline, uh, or and also another question that might pop up: tagline. What is a tagline? When you're moving a load, like flying a flying a wall or a form forming wall or you're flying a makeup air unit, you're supposed to have a, a rope hanging off it. They call it a tagline. And what's the best knot to use for that is a bowline. Um, what else did I have on here? Oh yeah, the symbols and, oh, and crane crane signals. Because again, crane signals is a safety thing. You know, you're trying to, uh, the, the crane operator is like 100 feet over there or he's up in a tower crane. You're just trying to do signals to the guy. Uh, you should know them all, but the, ba the basic ones are basically the two thumbs out, boom out, boom in, right? Though that's a possibility, or the one, the thumb up, boom up, right? Or when you get into the finger, so it depends on what some guys call it line, some guys call it load. But up slow, down slow, you know, again, it's not that hard to find. Um, it's not that hard to find uh, anything online and to look at those over and memorize them, right? It's because a lot, a lot of guys don't use it. No guys ever even see a mobile crane on their job ever, right? Because that's the kind of stuff they're doing. I'm going to just uh, pause this for a second because I want to go through my notes and make sure I haven't missed any other safety stuff. Because there's not a lot of safety questions. Like, you're only going to get a couple, but you should be reviewed on it. You should know what it is. You should be, you should know it anyways because you're going on a job site. You might <laughs> you make sure nobody kills you or maims you for life. All right. <clears throat> All right, hey everyone. Um, little uh, little uh, transitions there. You can see I'm pausing. Sometimes I gotta pause for something to drink. Non-alcoholic at this time. Um, or, or just to kind of get my notes back together so I can keep this flowing reasonably well. One thing I want to, um, I should have put this at the beginning before safety, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be talking about things during all these lessons. And one thing that I want to get uh, across to people, whoever's watching this, you know, I know I'm going to get people that are like teachers watching this and it, I'm not trying to make you a better sheet metal worker. I'm not trying to teach you the trade. Uh, I'm trying to review the C of 308A C of Q, the sheet metal exam, because the whole curriculum of what people learn in school is quite extensive, especially depending on what school you go to. I went to Mohawk College, which <laughs> I'm going to say is probably number one or number two in Southern Ontario and is ranking up there basically right up with the Ontario Sheet Metal College, which is what I call the Local 30 one out of Oakville, because they're fantastic as well. And they, they don't skip nothing. They don't take it easy on you. My advanced teacher, when, when we did test, oh, did, are we gonna get uh, multiple choice? No way you're getting multiple choice. You gotta know, you gotta have a firm grasp of what you're doing. Um, when you're doing any um, uh, any questions to do with math and formulas, uh, we used to get three or four different numbers thrown thrown into this um, uh, math question, and you'd have to figure out which two or three of those out of the four possible numbers they just threw at you to figure out your formula. So at the end of it, when we left school, we were told, "Hey, you're leaving school. Go right." Don't wait. Uh, and sure enough, I, I wrote within two weeks and it, none of it had leaked out of my head. So I was able to uh, do pretty well mid 80s, right? And that's immediately within, within two to three weeks of writing, that's when I started tutoring guys because I met so many guys that had nowhere to turn. Guys I worked with and, and then my training consultant from the ministry after I was asked to help somebody said, wow, you helped, you helped this guy. Can you help another guy? And then I started helping more guys and they kept passing the CFQ. Uh, so that's the only reason I'm <laughs> in this bo boat, you might say, uh, is because I've been helping guys and help, I've been helping guys for years now, right? So, and that's 
again, I'm not trying to make you a better sheet metal worker. Hopefully you're all, you're a good sheet metal worker. I'm just trying to prep you for the CFQ. So I'm, I'm not going to waste your time on a lot of stuff that, you know, really doesn't need to be wasted on, which there are many, many uh, things that, again, that it was so extensive in school that uh, it would be overboard. Like when I look at my advanced and intermediate binders that are still sitting in my closet like it's <laughs> it's this thick and you can't just open that up and read it from front to back and say oh i can write the cfq now you know you can't it's impossible so keeping that in mind we're going to be going over little things like that talking about stuff um a we just did about 10 minutes worth of safety questions or whatever eight to ten minutes are you writing it down Will it make it easier for you? Some guys are good at memorization. They can just remember what I spit out. Some guys are going to have to write it down to memorize it. Uh, do what you got to do. <laughs> you got to pass the you got to pass the CFQ, man. <laughs> you know, move on with your life. Take that weight off your shoulders. Um, so I'm going to be when it comes to math. A lot of guys. A lot of guys that have failed are guys that are struggling with math because there's so many different formulas for math. Then there's the formulas that go with pattern, and guys just, you know, I can't just dive you right back into it. I'm going to spoon feed it to you nice and slow and, and keep the important stuff to you. And as, as I'm re explaining or reteaching or reviewing or refreshing you on stuff, I'm going to explain, why am I teaching you this? What, what's the point of it? Like, we're going to do, right now, I'm going to reteach you fractions. Most guys, most guys come to me, they can't add a fraction. They can't, they, they, they can't multiply a fraction. But then they say to me, well, what for? What do we need a fraction for? Well, there's lots. There's, there's always lots. Um, a, uh, let, let's start with, Simple three eighths. Wow, three eighths. Whoop de do. How about a three eighths groove seam, right? And how do we take that three eighths groove seam and apply it to the platter? But we'll we'll get to that. But three three eighths times three, you know, do the one is nine eighths, right? Simple simple stuff like that, and and that's your allowance. Your you know what's your allowance for a groove seam? Three times the width. Right? We'll go over that when we start practicing pattern. But again, when we get to there, I don't need people going like stutter stepping like, oh, fraction, fraction, what are, what are we doing there? It's like, you know, try to memorize that and figure that out, right? Or when you do have, so say you ended up with nine eighths, which isn't a real, it's not a proper number, right? Anyways, nine, nine eighths is nine, one and one eighth. But nine eighths you have, and then you got to take that and split it in half to apply it to a pattern. So, so basically to split that in half, you're dividing it by two. Which I got, like, for me, there, there's a lot of shortcuts. And for, for that pattern question, I'm just going to do the, what I find is the easiest. And I always tell guys, if you have 9 eighths or whatever, 5, five sixteenths, Basically, you just double the bottom number, and it, it's a short. It's a shortcut for d dividing by two. And when you do it, cutting the groove seam in half, it, it's really easy that way. Same with. Let's keep bouncing around with that. We I should have started with adding and subtracting, but we'll just start with this because this this is something that you're gonna see most likely, right? So again, so say you had five sixteenths groove seam. So what's the groove seam formula? Three times. So you multiply that by three equals 15 sixteenths. So you have 15 sixteenths allowance for your groove seam. Well, I need to use half of it on each side of the pattern. If you guys still remember that, hopefully you remember that from school or hopefully not just re you're just using this course to learn, to uh, learn, uh, <laughs> how to write the sheet metal exam. So if I double that bottom number, I now have 15, 30 seconds. That's a shortcut, right? And if you, if as long as you know what you're doing, it shouldn't be a problem, right? So, it, and again, how do you get good at stuff? Practice. So if you're not going to practice 
little things like you, like if you're not gonna practice your fractions, okay, if you if you get your stuff, bang, 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 no problem, who cares? But if you're struggling with how to add and multiply a fraction, practice. I'm gonna put some numbers up on the board at the end of this part of the lesson, and you can pause it, write it all down, practice it, and then guess what we'll do? The next lesson that we do in a week or whatever, or whenever uh, you click on the next lesson, we'll go over it. Simple stuff like adding fractions. Now, we should always be adding fractions. A, you could be adding fractions to add thicknesses of metal. There's many little things. So, plus one half, one eighth plus three sixteenths. And again, for some guys, this is really easy stuff, right? But for some guys, it's not, right? They haven't. Uh, they're struggling. Let me pick another marker because I'm going through these markers like they're nothing. So, with adding, it's different from uh, multiplying. <coughs> Your bottom number has to be the same, right? I'm not going to start getting to denominators and all that and just get, trying to confuse you. Make it easy. The bottom number needs to be the same. So, if I'm going to make one half the same as a quarter, one half is actually two quarters and that marker is just as bad this is going to be one of those days <laughs> hold on a sec let me see how my purple marker is doing ah that's not so bad so one half is actually two two fourths even though that's not a real number but then it, now it makes it easy to add them together right one and two three quarters like these are simple things that you can practice. Do you need to practice it over and over and over again? No, you don't. You need to just learn how to do it, practice it once in a while, and the best way to do it is, oh, how about a groove seam question? What, what is the allowance for your groove seam? Three times the width. How do you apply it to a pattern? Divide by two and put half on each side of your pattern. And if you don't know what I mean by a pattern, well, we'll get to that part too. <laughs> when we start uh, dipping in the pattern. So again, I just want to start touching on this. So here's another one. 3 sixteenths, 1 eighth. What do we do? Well, we make 1 eighth, we now make that into 2 sixteenths. And if you don't know how I did that, obviously I'm just doubling the number. So now it's 2 sixteenths. So 5 sixteenths, right? Pretty straightforward. Um, I'm thinking we all learned this in, I don't know, grade four, grade five. So if you're having tr trouble reabsorbing it, rewind the film, go start again, right? And again, practice. You know, I, I could sit here like 1 8th plus 1 16th equals uh, 1 quarter <laughs> plus 3 sixteenths equals you know one half plus one quarter equals uh <laughs> you know it, 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 so, it, so many possibilities right uh seven sixteenths plus one eighth you know just to play around get get your brain working with these things and practice that the, the multiplication when we did when i did the multiplication again Usually, it's only going to be for the groove scene formula, so I'm not going to get into it too much. But there's a little bit of practice and get your head back into doing simple stuff like fractions. And then, you know, I, and I, I'll tell you right now, I'm probably not going to touch on fractions again because I'm sure some guys are going right now, is like, why are we doing fractions? Like, this, is, <laughs> this isn't grade six. Um, okay, so again, we're going to keep touching on stuff that you need to be reminded of. Basics, right? Um, <clears throat> let's see what I got here. I wrote some good stuff down. Really, really deep stuff. Oh. Hmm. Not, not the best circle I've ever drawn. So, back to basics. What is that? That's your diameter. What's that? That's your radius. And I'm hoping that 
you know, <laughs> this shouldn't be that difficult to you. Around the outside there, your circumference. Sorry, it's not the neatest writing. Circumference. Oh, and how do we get the circumference? Oh, pi d or pi times diameter. You know, basic formulas. We're just going to review this and talk about this because this, these little things are going to come into play all the time with your math and your layout and stuff like that. Like stretch, you know, the circumference of the circle. Another fancy word, stretch out. I don't know if you guys remember that from school, but so now let's go back to the circle again. I'm going to look at my screen there and see where I can fit another circle in here. See if I can fit one right there. How's that circle look? That doesn't look too bad. So right now you got circumference right there, right? So what I'm going to do is just, this kind of helps guys visualize this, is I'm going to do the area of that circle. So the, or what, again, fancy words, the cross sectional area of that circle, right? The surface area inside that circle. So area of circle. Pretty straightforward, right? What's that formula? Pi r squared. Yoink. So when it comes to circles, actually, you know what? Let me do this. I'm going to go into the circle like that. That way you know it's inside. Because again, the, the, this should all be basic. This should be basic to you guys, right? This should be simple. Uh, but it is, you know, let's just get it rolling back inside the head. Get the gears, get the little, little mice in there running around again. Because again, this is all going to be coming into play. Not just with pattern, but it'll, it'll be mostly pattern because uh, questions of simple things like a squared around. You're going to have a, say, a 20 by 14 squared around. They're going to say, what's the round size? Well, using these kind of formulas is uh, how you get uh, the answers for that. So that's pretty straightforward. And we'll get back into that and, you know, do some stuff and practice some of that stuff. Hopefully, if you've written that down, uh, you know, should be good for you. If not, you know what? Rewind the film. <laughs> that's what... Um, uh, that's why my brother, again, I've been doing this for a long time. I help a lot of guys around the GTA, Toronto area, and I've been helping a lot of guys for years. But hey, realistically, there's a lot of guys that can't get to, when I went to school, when I went to Mohawk, there was guys coming down from Sault Ste. Marie, Sud, like, like places way out there. And it's like, don't they have schools, like schools up there? And whether they do or not, I don't know. So again, if these, if somebody's up there and they can't pass, uh, they don't have access to help. Uh, what are they doing? They're, they're shit out of luck. So I'm hoping that this is going to help those guys out. You know what I mean? Because I know there's going to be people. Oh, you, you shouldn't be helping guys out. Uh, well, <laughs> wrong. I, I believe in helping my community. Because there's guys that got steamrolled in school that weren't as smart as the top guys in the class. That This stuff was easy. There's the guys that, you know, they're, you know, they're not the smartest guys or life got in the way, you know, oops, I had fucking two kids and I couldn't get to school and I, you know, working 60 hours a week and trying to get my school, whatever, right? Um, but this, again, was suggested to me from my brother to um, put this on film and then that way, hey, you watch it, you don't get it, rewind it, start over. Don't get it, watch it, rewind it. Start over. You know, if you gotta watch it 8,000 times, well, that's gonna suck for you. But again, simple stuff here. I'm just looking down at my sheet. Again, I, I find this stuff basic that I sometimes I forget how simple it is. But you know what? If you haven't done it in a long time, again, surface area, length times width, like very simple. But hey, if you haven't gone over this in a long time, it it can be an issue. And again, well, we'll see if you, when I go through edit, when I have to edit all this film, I'll, you should, I should be able to see this, no problem. I'm hoping you are anyways. Length times width. And again, I keep saying stuff like surface area. 
and uh, I haven't mentioned linear. I'm just gonna I'm gonna backstep a second here for you guys. Linear area. volume okay so basically if you're going to write this number down and say millimeters it'd be millimeters if if you're going to put the area here it'd be millimeters squared if you're going to do this volume it would be millimeters cubed just again i know it's basics but just getting it going in your head again revisiting it because we're going to be going there with some of this stuff, right? And I, and I don't want you to, to be slowed down by it. So, length times width, pretty straightforward. Let's get into something a little bit more serious. Ooh, oh, triangle. So, I'm just going to call that side A, and I call that side B, and I call that side C. For Pythagoras, you know, Pythagorean theorem, a squared, b squared. So you're regurgitating this in your head. Some guys will write this equals the square root of c. I don't like that. That's not the way I was taught. That's the way you write this formula. And again, writing your formulas down are very important. What's another name for c? Your hypotenuse. Let's see if I can remember how to spell that. Hypotenuse. Huh, I might be right. I might not be. I don't really care if it's spelled wrong. The hypotenuse, right? Which is also known as C, right? So getting into that, uh, you know what? I shouldn't have to draw that because that should be obvious that that's square. This is going to come up. Are they going to say, oh, what's the formula for this? No, they're, oh, they might. What's, what's Pythagoras? They might ask you, but most likely they're going to toss you a question. They're going to say, oh, hmm, uh, you have a B vent off of a roof or anything. They could just, but I'm just using a B vent as a, as a, as an example. Oh, that B vent is, uh, eight feet high. Um, you need to put uh, wires on that to secure it so it doesn't fall over. <laughs> and that, that wire is tied to the roof over here, four feet away. So do you think, do you think they're going to spoon feed that to you and say, oh, there you go, I'll figure that out. And oh, by the way, it's Pythagoras. They're not going to tell you. You have to be Sherlock Holmes and figure this stuff out on your own. Just like all the other questions, what formula, uh, a heel, uh, uh, the heel of an elbow, you know, just what, what formula am I going to use? Uh, <laughs> Temperaturized calculation, what formula am I going to use? Or if they're looking for an angle, right? Where I'm not going to touch base on Sokotoa right now, but we will be. But again, practicing stuff like that. But let, let's go back to the basics of that. No, we're not. We're actually not going to because we're going to we're going to cover one more because again, it's whether or not you'll see it. And uh oh, sorry. I'm just watching my screen here and it's flashing on me. Okay. Up yours. Um let's do another formula. See if anybody recognizes this one. And again, I'm looking, I'm cheating. I'm looking at my cheat sheet here, right? Because again, it's not easy to remember all these. If, if you're a teacher in school, oh yeah, they look like geniuses. I remember thinking my teacher was, oh, look at this guy go. Then you realize once you've done your school, this guy does this every day of his life. So it, it's actually quite easy for him. Um, mm -mm -mm, two. Plus offset squared minus L over three. Now, I'm gonna, 
what that's called to me that's called swing point some people call it radius point I call it swing point formula this one down here where am I gonna write that that it's gonna fit on the board you can see it I'm gonna do it right here belt length and unfortunately right now if you're saying what belt because <laughs> it's been that long since you've been in school this is for your OG offset and if you're also going what's an OG offset Ugh. you're killing me so that's yeah ugh, that's awful <laughs> that's awful looking <laughs> pretend I didn't draw that yikes <laughs> that's an OG offset a, a damn ugly one I'll tell ya let's try that again ah, there we go still pretty bad anyways there's your offset and there's your length now we're not going to get it because there's so many ways to do these formulas when it comes to the length of this fitting about what they call the flat like if, if this has if this is going down or up or it, it changes so many things we're not going to get into that you're not going to you're not going to see that on a CFQ if they do anything it's going to be just a basic OG offset you know something like 12 by 8 with a 4 inch kick really simple small simple and it's not going to get uh, insane so when you're filling in your length you know there's your offset there's your length but it comes back to can you remember your order of operations and let me see where I'm going to fit this one in get my fat head out of the way because I'm all over the place bed mass you guys remember this from grade six or grade five even depends on what school you went to brackets exponents decimal multiplication adding subtracting so brackets, do you see any brackets in here? When they say brackets, they're talking about that, of course, which they're not in this. Exponents, hey, those are exponents, those are exponents. So pretty, pretty straightforward. You shouldn't have pro problems doing this, but we might, uh, we might go over it. But hopefully you've got that written down. And if not, you can always pause film, right? Pause film, news at 11, right? Okay, so let's go back to something simple. A squared plus B squared. Because so I'm hoping that you guys have already done all this. And as I said earlier, uh, there's many things that they could ask you to use this. Here's another cute one that I love that people... And again, it's my drawings aren't perfect. So we're going to say that that's 12 inches long. And, put, and I'm going to say that this is 8 inches. And I'm going to say that this is, I'll say that this is 4. So again, people are looking at it, oh, what kind of crazy formula is this? Well, it's basically, <laughs> you're looking at the side view of a flat on bottom transition right and they want to see if oh, oh a triangle oh so if you've got eight and four here wow what's that part four twelve so let's let's put it into the formula do a proper formula let's practice this a four right plus b twelve squared all right four squared 12 squared I'm just doing it off the, my head because I didn't even bring my calculator down with me so four squared 16 plus 12 squared 144 so at 150 160 so what's what's 150 square rooted I don't know eight times eight I don't know 10 times 10 no yeah 15 times 15 is 225 14 13 times 13 is 169 so it's you know 12 and you know 
it would be just a little bit over 12 inches anyways because that's the the top piece coming down in your transition there so again just practicing stuff like this right some guys don't need it you got you guys this could be easy for people right and i'm hoping it is but again this is just refreshing getting a little refresher going because i'm looking at the timer on my uh camera here and i can see that the time's just ticking away just reviewing stuff so um, as classes have gone the guys that i talked to that have done refresher courses and or school when they when they put up their hand they go oh, i didn't get that 100 percent of the time the teacher says sorry there's no time left i gotta teach everybody else first <laughs> meanwhile the funny part of it, 10 other guys in the class didn't put their hand up because they were scared and meanwhile half the class needed to go over it but they move on to go to, to something else and everyone's just sitting there uh, and, I, and I get tons of guys like that that got just left got left behind in class again okay later <laughs> okay I'm going to got myself a calculator uh, not, not exactly prepped for this I am a rookie at this uh, filming work. Um, I hope you liked my uh, intro video. Uh, oh, so, and we're going to talk about calculators. Let me see if we can get a good look at that one. I'm gonna, oh, I'm going to put, I got my lights on there. I don't know if you can really get a good look at that. It's not a really one of these like super scientific calculators. There's only certain handful of certain function buttons you need like that one square root so 160 square root button okay here we go let's try that again 160 square root 12.64 <laughs> all right so basically 12.64 oh so that's what that is oh 12.64 wait a minute can you find 12 points can you point find 0.64 on your tape measure more stuff to review so before we continue going on I'm going to talk to you about a calculator I'm going to get rid of this we are going to go over doing a couple of formulas because I want to just get that back in your head let's go right back down to 0.64 let's make it a little bit bigger decimal 64 and I'm going to bring up a little practice thing here for you All right, and how about point Decimal nine one. How about decimal four three? How about decimal one six? We need those into a fraction, and there's there's lots of ways to do it. Most guys <laughs> they just use their calculator. But what if you get the wrong calculator in uh, at the ministry when you go to write at all the different offices? There's downtown Toronto, there's Mississauga, there's Barrie, there's Hamilton, there's uh, Sh uh, the Schwa, sorry, Oshawa, I do believe, Pickering, um, where else is there? Uh, there's other places, all different calculators, and it, one thing you better learn is how to use a calculator, because um, how to find stuff, what, what, tan button, square root, exponent button, uh, how to square something, you know what I mean? But uh, using your calculator, let's do this. So on that last question, we had 0.64, but you're not gonna have that, that might not be in your answer column for one. And hey, in life, oh, you did some math, and uh, I got 0.64, where's that on my tape measure? I don't know, it's maybe five eighths, maybe? prove it well the best way that I was taught is basically take these numbers multiply by 16 and you say well why 16 as in sixteenths of an inch as in sixteenths of an inch oh that makes sense well yeah so let's start with 0.64, which was the one that we had to begin with. 0.64 times 1.6. 10.24. Well, get rid of the 0.24 part, because it, and you're rounding it down. So it's 10 sixteenths. Well, 
you obviously know 10 sixteenths is not a real fraction. 10 sixteenths is 5 eighths. You should know that. If not, you should start practicing. But let's go back to the calculator for a sec, because I watch guys use these calculators and it's hilarious. Because uh, so many guys, big mitts on their hands, big sausage fingers, and it's just like, and they're like, it's not working. Take your time, and every time you punch something into a calculator, look at the screen. Point six four. Stop. Look. Oh, point six four. Okay. Times sixteen. Times sixteen. Did you get sixteen? Yes. Equals. Always take your time with a calculator because I see guys they sausage finger it, and then uh, they come up with some answer and they're like, oh. You know, you're looking, trying to figure this out, and you sausage it, and it's, uh, oh, it's uh, 1,206. Oh, so it's 1,260. Oh, that's not right. Oh, yeah. Take your time with your calculator and learn how to use it. We're going to talk more about the calculator as we go through more math in our next uh, several lessons. And you're like, oh, you got to put out with this several more times. Ugh. So let's talk about this one. 0.91. Well, first of all, I always get guys to, before you start smashing your sausage fingers into this thing, where should 0.91 be? Like, is it half an inch? Is it three quarters of an inch? It's pretty high. I'm going to say 7 eighths or 5, 15 sixteenths. Well, let's prove it. Clear. 0.91. Good. Times 16. Good. 14.56. Well, you're going to round that up to 15. 15 sixteenths. Let's do the point four three. Clear. Point four three. Good. Times 16. Looks good. Equals 6.88. I'm going to round that up to 7. Oh, 7 sixteenths. Point one six. Well, I'm looking at that. I'm going to guess, well, one eighth, three sixteenths maybe. Yeah, let's see what we get. Point one six looks good. Times sixteen, two point five six. It's like right in between, but that's why we have to do this. So two point five six. I'm gonna round it up to three. Three sixteenths. Pretty straightforward. Do you have to be a whiz at this? Well, no, but you need to know how to do it so you can change a fraction because you'll get that on, you'll do some math and you'll end up with something 0 0.9, 0 0.43. And when you go look at your answer column, it's going to be in a fraction and you're going to be like, and you know the fractions they put there are all going to be right. If, if, if the answer is half inch, you know 9 sixteenths is going to be there and you know 7 sixteenths is going to be there. It's just to mess with you. It's not like they're going to be all over the place. No, no, they they put in answers to mess with you. Just, just to make sure, well, people get personal about it. They don't like it. They think they're being messed with. But it's to show that you have a firm grasp of this material. And if you don't, get it. <laughs> keep practicing. Keep working. All right. So let's get out of that. I like that uh, little calculator review because, again, I see so many guys. Oh, and one little more thing on calculator review. You can't see. I don't think you're going to be able to see that. Let me see. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. But there's a little button here that says DRG that changes the function that the calculator is. Degrees. My, I didn't bring glasses. Radian and gradient. You want to be in degrees because if it's not... It just starts doing funny calculations and uh, you'll be uh, having issues. No, let's go back to something as simple as a circle. Not bad. We are going to say that the diameter, we'll say the diameter is 8 inches. All right. I want to know what the area of this circle is. Oh, well, what's pi r squared? All right, so I'm going to just write this out. I always write short form. I should write this longer, but it's just to show the work. I want to show the work because I know a lot of guys would just put that in the calculator, boom, done. But I'm just showing the work 
so you can practice that, right? So what's uh, the radius uh, of this circle? The diameter is eight, you know that the radius is four. And that's squared, so then you go down here, 3.14 times four squared is 16, and so forth and so on, right? And, <laughs> and of course, what I would like to see, let me uh, do my math here. Let me put my sausage fingers into this thing. I'm gonna, I am just going to use 3.14. Uh, it doesn't always bite you in the ass, but sometimes it will. So I have 50.24. Now, as I always say to the guys that I'm tutoring, that should have a unit of measurement. And I will always, you're not going to, you guys watching this don't have a chance for me to uh, bug you. Can you guys see that number there? Is that, uh, let me just tilt this uh, down a bit. Oh, that's a little better. Because I went too low on the screen there. You can still see my head. <laughs> and I, you always got, when you're doing your math, you have to keep your unit of measurement in there. And you're going to see why. So this is inches. So we have inches, right? But it's square inches now because now we've multiplied it by itself and we're into area, right? So I always do it like this, square inches. Some guys like to be lazy and they go, um, they'll go <laughs> they, they do this little thing like that, little, little inch symbol with the two there. I can't stand it myself because most guys are like like do a little scribble like that. You have what did you just write there? It's just scribble, right? Unit of measurement. Are you in apples? Are you in oranges? You can, it, it matters so much when you start getting into these formulas, even the basic ones. What unit of measurement are you in? Important all the time. Uh, a very prime example of this is let's take this up back up here. Fifty point two four square inches. What if we wanted this to be in square feet for a CVA formula, which we'll get to. Well, you're going to have to divide that by 144, right? But if you had to be in square feet and you do your math, you might not even forget that you're in square inches and yet you have to change it to square feet. That's why you always keep those units of measurement handy because it also helps click stuff in there, right? So then you, you know, divide by 144 and then uh, that'll turn it all into square feet, but we'll, we'll uh, expand on that later down the road, next lesson or so. And uh, okay, that's, that's another one there. I would like to keep practicing. Uh, just just a little touch. I know we're I'm, hopefully I'm not burning up too much time for you guys, but again, this is just a quick start review. Let's um, let's go to a swing point, All right? There minus O or offset squared over four times the offset. So that's for the swing point. Let me write that down again. Swing point formula. And let me write that down. Formula. Let me burn some fucking ink. Formula. So again, well, yeah, that's probably a terrible drawing. <coughs> so if we use that as our offset, so basically the, the swing point is. Like if you, if you remember that from school, you're going to take your dividers, and of course I don't have any dividers with me here either. You're going to take that and, and do those, right? So you're going to measure out. Now, you're not, this isn't a practical course. It's, you're not going to have to lay this thing out. What they're going to ask you, they're going to give you this. They're going to give you the length. They're going to say 12. They're going to say that this kick, or kick, I call it a kick, an offset is four inches. And then you're basically going to just start putting it all in there, right? So let's go. So that would equal, what's the length? 12, because again, we're not getting into allowances, right? We, we may or may not in future lessons, but this is just right now, I'm pumping these numbers in here for you to practice doing a formula. Offset, four inches squared, four times the offset, four. Okay, let's continue. Four times four, 16, because it's 
we can do that. It, uh, the exponent, 12, 12 squared, 144, minus 14 squared, 16. Now, you're not gonna knock those off, you're gonna minus that from that and then divide it. Which I'm gonna get my calculator out here. 144 minus 16 equals 128, divided by 16 equals eight. Oh, that was a nice round number. So basically you're gonna take from your center there and you're gonna go eight. And again, that's reviewing that, which we're not gonna do right now. I just want you to get back into practicing, doing a small, doing a formula, changing it out, putting your numbers in there and continuing it and show your work. So that when you're at the end of this and you're uh, having trouble with that, did I, uh, I move, the, move that out too much again? Uh, there we go. How's that? Add out. And uh, see if that comes into focus a little better. Not sure if it does, but uh, there we go. Sorry, I cut that off at the top of the screen there. But uh, now you can see that. Again, we're just practicing. We're not getting right into pattern. We're just practicing a little bit of math there. And for now, I think that's all I, I, that's all I really wanted to do today. It's just to get you back into this, get your head, uh, get your brain rolling with the math and simple stuff like memorizing the, the safety questions, right? Possible safety questions. Are they all going to be there? No, but you might get a couple. So let's stay refreshed on it, right? And uh, we'll see you in the next lesson. Unless, of course, I add something in, five, in two seconds from now, but uh, I don't think I'm going to. All right. All right, guys. Um, that was the end of lesson one. Uh, thank you for being patient with my um, video editing because I'm just learning this and uh, it's going to take me a while to get good. Obviously, the lighting's a bit heavy. I've been watching my uh, clips here and uh, seeing all the blemishes on my face lit up by the lights. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try to get that out of it as well. So back to the first lesson, when it comes to math, practice, 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 practice. If you're not getting it, even some of the, 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 the fractions again, practice, go over it. You don't, don't just open your book, oh, look at that, well, that's a fraction, practice. Um, and if I haven't given you enough practice stuff, I'm sure you got kids <laughs> or you know somebody, or go online and just find practice sheets for, uh, practice sheets for, um, uh, basic math especially uh, fractions which which are pretty simple right uh when it comes to the other stuff the, the safety questions right there's a lot of uh, things in there like even with the numbers like what height to tie off and stuff memorize that you can't remember it write it out because a lot of the time when you start writing it out again i said before it imprints on your brain and it just makes it easier for a lot of people to remember that way and uh and other than that, we're going to, uh, I'll see you on the next uh, lesson and hopefully you hang around for it. Please be patient. I had to start this off slow um, to ease some people back into it. Um, and again, we are only going to be covering relevant stuff. We're not going to be going over uh, mountains and mountains of material that you're never going to have to use for anything, let alone the C of Q. So, uh, in the next lesson, we're going to continue uh, revisiting math and getting your head wrapped around that because, again, math isn't a large part of the CFQ, but it is a good part. And if you're struggling with it, it's just going to slow you right down and you're going to end up having to skip all math questions. And uh, we don't want that. You need to get as many ch chances at scoring marks to pass it as you possibly can. So uh, please come find me for lesson two. Later.